Jonathan Porritt is co-founder of Forum for the Future. He's an eminent writer, broadcaster and commentator on sustainable development. Established in 1996, Forum for the Future is now the UK's leading sustainable development charity with 70 staff and over 100 partner organisations including some of the world's leading companies. In addition, he is co-director of the Prince of Wales Business and Sustainability Programme which runs seminars for senior executives around the world. He's non-executive director of Wessex Water and of Wilmot Dixon Holdings. He's a trustee of the Ashton Awards for Sustainable Energy and is involved in the work of many NGOs and the charities as patron, chair or special advisor. Uh, his presentation this afternoon is Innovation and Aspiration, the Key to a Sustainable Future. Can we have a big warm welcome please to Mr Jonathan Porritt. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, David. Um, delighted to be here this afternoon. Delighted to be able to support Wiener Berger in its important efforts to demonstrate what solutions to today's built environment problems look like. I love events like this. You get to see what people are really doing on the ground and get to share in discussions about how we can reconcile some of today's critical economic and growth imperatives with some of our equally, if not more critical, sustainability imperatives. And I want to talk today about these two concepts, innovation and aspiration. And it has to be said that innovation and aspiration aren't the two words which are normally instantaneously connected with people involved in the built environment. Please don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be rude here. I am a non-executive director of Wilmot Dixon. I know what this industry looks like. And I can assure you that the first words that come into people's minds when you say, I work in the built environment, is not innovation. So for me to share with you today part of what is going on around sustainability more broadly, to celebrate some of the work that Wienerberger is doing in this area, is, I think, a, a chance to open up a slightly different dimension. Whether it is man-made or whether it is natural, here is what is going to happen during the rest of this century. It is now considered to be extremely unlikely that we will be able to peg average temperature increases below 2 degrees centigrade. And up until now, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, the discussion has been that if we could keep average temperature, so that's average global temperature, in the poles, around the equator and so on, if we could keep average temperature increases below 2 degrees centigrade by the end of this century, then we would have a 50-50 chance of maintaining a stable climate. So below 2 degrees, 50-50 chance. So you can see the odds are already a little bit dodgy, because 50-50 doesn't sound brilliant to a lot of people. But at 2 degrees centigrade, we'd still have a 50-50 chance of maintaining a stable climate. We wouldn't see runaway climate change unfolding in front of our eyes. I was in Australia two weeks ago. And in Australia, they had just published the figures for the number of weather extremes in 2012. So the number of weather records that had beaten, wet is this, dry is that, biggest storm, whatever it might be, 268 weather records had been beaten in Australia in one year in 2012. Australia is becoming one of those epicenters of what happens when the climate change begins to change for real. Now, this matters to me because, as I mentioned, I'm a non-executive director of Wilmot Dixon. We, at the moment, are facing up to our own innovation challenges. Wilmot Dixon has a small house-building element in it, and one of the new brands that we have brought to bear inside Wilmot Dixon is a new brand called Be Here, which is essentially building units for rent. As you can see, quite small at the moment, sites being acquired in various different places, and what we're really trying to do is to go after these apartments for young professionals to rent and changing the ground rules of what the rental market really looks like. We have a rent well spent commitment. We have a number of commitments on sustainability, all part and parcel of what practically every one of the members of the Green Building Council is doing today, trying to work out 
what each of us can be doing in this area. And that's why the Wienerberger E4 House is so important, why the whole concept about sustainability as a differentiator, as a driver of future prosperity, is so important to Wienerberger and to all of its business partners. That is me, standing next to Dr. Noal Hosni. Dr. Noal is the director of the Zayed Future Energy Prize, the world's largest prize for sustainable energy. They give out millions of dollars every year to sustainable energy award winners. It's a kind of big global version of the Ashton Awards, if you like. We are standing there. We didn't stand there for very long, I can assure you, because it was so damn hot. We could only be there for about 30 seconds before we get, became extremely uncomfortable. We are standing there in front of another kind of solar technology. This is another version of concentrated solar power. And what you can see there are beautifully engineered concave mirrors that move to maximize the incoming radiation and reflect that radiation onto the pipe that you can see running the length of these arrays. Again, creates incredibly hot temperatures in those pipes, goes around to a power station at the heart of the solar array, creates electrons for the Abu Dhabi grid. So to end, really, I think it's fair to say if you look back over the last 30 years, for me, if I look back to the time when, with hope in my heart, I wrote Seeing Green, if you look back to those times, we have not exercised our responsibilities on behalf of future generations in the way that most people would have wanted. We've missed opportunity after opportunity to use innovation effectively to reduce the net negative impact of humankind on the planet and increase the wealth-creating opportunities that comes from living more sustainably. But by 2050, we still have all the time we need to get it right in every sector of the economy, including the built environment. And for those who were here before listening to the presentation from our colleagues from Arab, you will have got a sense of the scale of the transformation we're going to need in the built environment for this sector to play its part in creating a genuinely brilliant world for the 9 billion people or so who will be living in that world in 2050. This is where sustainability has to go. It is now all about accelerated innovation journeys, producing quality products and services that people will aspire to own or to use in order to create that very different kind of world. It's an incredibly exciting time, as long as we don't miss this one last opportunity to get it right. Thank you.